visit to Israel and Palestine one year ago brought me face to face with clear-cut large-scale violations of international law stemming from Israel's occupation. A Judaization policy, uh, the racist uh, intentions of the Israel, the occupier. Oppression uh, and uh, killing, as well as settlement activities and uh, the confiscation of land, as well as the Judaization of uh, Arab Jerusalem. An occupying a power that uh, kills uh, children and women deports Arabs from their land. These people are subjected to conditions of existence such that it will culminate in their physical extermination. The crimes committed by Israel, the occupying power against civilians. Occupation, aggression, militarism, state terrorism and crimes against humanity. That the Mavi Marmara humanitarian flotilla case will not be forgotten. The next speaker is United Nations Watch. Thank you, Mr. President. Starting three years ago in Tehran, then spreading the past year from Tunis to Tahrir Square, and continuing as we speak in Hama, Homs, and Dera, millions of young men and women have braved bullets and beatings to peacefully stand up for their rights, to cry out after decades of corruption, cruelty, and oppression for human dignity and freedom. As they break the chains of their bondage, many lift their heads and ask, where was the world? In all the years that we were imprisoned by brutal bullies that trampled our basic human rights, where was the United Nations? To these courageous and idealistic youth, we must tell the truth. We must say to them in all candor, sadly, world policy was to look away from your suffering. We must tell them, despite its declared mission to protect human rights, when faced with gross human rights abuses by Colonel Gaddafi's Libya, Bashar al-Assad's Syria, Mubarak's Egypt and others, UN policy, this council's policy, was to look away. Indeed, until the Arab Spring, abuses by these governments were met by not a single council resolution, inquiry, or urgent session. We must also tell them it was worse than that. The policy embraced in session after session of this council was to allow these governments to act and be treated as champions of human rights. In 2003, Colonel Gaddafi's Libya was elected chair. In 2010, it was re-elected to this council. The agenda item under which we meet today, targeting Israel alone, is the living symbol of this policy. While thousands were tortured in Libya, Syria, and Egypt, the only country to be the object of a permanent agenda item at every council meeting was Israel. The countries introducing the resolutions making the accusations were the violators and perpetrators themselves. Despite everything that happened this year, despite all the killings of women and children in Syria and elsewhere, only months ago, this council and the General Assembly renewed this item. We must ask, what if? What if the world, what if the UN, what if this council had turned a spotlight on the abuses of President Assad? Would he still be in power today? Would he still be murdering his own citizens today? Thank you, Mr. President.